I sincerely hoped this game would last long enough to at least it becoming a free-to-play, so that I could at least experience this epic phenomenon of a game. I really had my suspicions whether it would be interesting for me because I'm kinda tired to play live service games that never end, have no clear beginning and have no clear end. But that's just me, and that's alright. What I didn't expect is for Concord to die so quickly following the rumors about wasted hundreds of millions of dollars on its development through the course of six years. So let's find out what's happened. 2018 an array of former Bungie and Activision workers create their own Firewalk Studios and eventually get investments from Sony to become fully acquired by 2023. Apparently, these workers had experience behind their belt dealing with live service games, as a lot of them worked on Destiny 2. Through these six years, there were speculations about the upcoming game, followed by the overall hype from Sony's side that multiplayer games are going to be the future of gaming, and how they were already investing into several live service projects for the future years. The office of Firewalk included approximately 150 people working on what soon to be become Concord, and when we all know how it turned out, I'd like to see what were these 150 people doing for 6 years. But we can all see what they have done in the end. And just like in Linkin Park's song, it doesn't even matter. Initially, the studio planned to offer us a hero shooter with 5v5 battles, 16 heroes that were going to have unique and intriguing stories behind them, and the maps with modes would be so awesome that everyone is going to forget about the free pleasures of witnessing cards women in latex in Overwatch. No indication of the unique game mode, no other details other than a couple of cinematics that were going to make people hyped about the game so much that they would spend their $40 for a copy. Because apparently $40 is such a small amount of money that everyone is going to spend it on an unknown project. For the sake of fairness, I remember when Overwatch 1 was a paid game too, and it also costed $40, but I remember buying Overwatch and eventually not regretting it because of how fun it actually was back then. Can't say about the current state, cause I don't play it no more by the way. But the difference with Concord is that the hero shooters already exist, and they're mostly free to play with optional microtransactions. Just to find the price tag of even $10 would be a whole task for Concord. Eventually, the game had its beta stage, but it was kinda weird. Turns out, the meaning of beta for Firewalk was pre-ordering the deluxe version of Concord and get 4 codes for beta access that you can share. In other words, it's a referral marketing in its most primitive form, but in order to participate in referral you need to pay. Nice way of telling the potential buyers to never play the game. They further had a real open beta, when everyone who wanted to participate could download on their PS5 and PC. The population has reached its highest ceiling and truth be told, that was already an indication that the game should stay in the oven for another year at least. Instead, they have made the game public and received the reaction they deserved. So there are only two options for this type of behavior. First, Sony already knew Concord is going to bomb so bad that it's better to kill it as quickly as possible. Or Sony was so oblivious that it believed it still succeeded in the long run. The media coverage was mostly the same as usual. The number of usual suspects of various IGNs and PC gamers would fan write everything out of the title that includes they them anywhere, while criticizing something like Wukong for whatever reason. As a reality, Concord is closed, and Wukong is still strong on Steam alone, despite being a single player game. So let's try to review this stuff. Obviously, I'm not the one to pre-order games and buying them for the full price, and due to the developers pulling the game out of all digital storefronts and shutting down the servers, I'll check and comment only on recordings of the gameplay of the heroes who sacrifice their money and time to try Concord. The graphics obviously needs a lot of improvements, and I cannot say it's bad because of how it runs or how certain lighting and shadow effects work and look, I can say it's bad Design-wise, 
Everyone except the laziest people have already pointed out on the character design of Concord and how badly it looks and feels, mostly because the characters are either over-designed or under-designed, but we'll start with level design. By the way, am I the only one who got tired to see the retro-futuristic style of fantasy and science fiction in media? Because Concord is full of it, full of scent and dust, full of broken metallic parts and overall poverty. I generally do not mind if a live service shooter just has one style of map for the sake of diversity, and I believe the local version of retrofuturism is neither interesting nor fresh and full of new ideas and, most importantly, does not have any history and storytelling to them. Even the levels in fighting games have a lot more presence, freshness and are more pleasant to look at, despite being basically decorations for fights in majority of cases. Maps are too big for the intended matches of 5v5. Five teams. They need to be more condensed and have more ways of attacking others and defending yourself. If it wanted to have some element of tactics, it needed corresponding level design like it is in Valorant, Siege or even CS2, where every point on the map can be used to one's advantage and assist in winning gunfight. And if it wanted to be closer to traditional arena shooters, it also needed a lot narrower maps with more ways to fight. The lack of any graphical and design consistency is especially noticeable in the characters. The dev team have dedicated their time to define the character's gender for whatever reason, instead of hiring even the cheapest services for character design. First and foremost, the design of characters should have one unifying style. Not obviously similar, but an array of details that make them exist in common virtual worlds. Bigger and more notable gaming companies even have the specific rule sets of how to design new characters so that they wouldn't look out of place compared to the current ones. Everyone has already compared the characters of Concord to their respective inspirations from Overwatch, but I'd make somewhat different examples. We can all say what we want about Genshin Impact, but its anime-like aesthetic and design never changes from character to character. We can recall Warframe and how each frame is designed in a specific sci-fi style, resembling something close to alien aesthetic. Concord has apparently never picked up its own style, and additionally to all the y'alls and us's, attempted to make every character different, which is kinda dumb. Imagine opening a new box of Warhammer models, only to see a LEGO human. I assume that the disappointment would be quite immeasurable. Next, similar to the level design lacking any form of storytelling, history and respective atmosphere, the Character models have either none or it's so convoluted that it couldn't be reflected in character design. Here is Orisa from Overwatch, an African defense robot with previous history of suppressing riots and fighting serious conflicts. It looks like a centaur and plays like a slow but powerful tank. And here is Emari from Concord, who looks like a mishmash between a ninja turtle, a football player and a tin can. What can we derive from her looks other than the complete lack of makeup taste? Here is the Veers, who is defined as them, apparently because they wear a transparent bucket on the head. And here is Spy from Team Fortress, who does not need any analysis because we all see why he is a spy. The continuous use of ochre, swarm green colors in costumes with even more excessive use of royal purple for contrast makes me think that even the art and design students and schools could do better. But needless to say that the character design does not actually make a live service game, especially if the devs may provide more skins to enhance their looks. Or in case of Concord, could have. The story basically does not exist. Initially, we're being shown a cutscene where some of our characters are being chased by a mysterious guild because the team has stolen some important artifact from them. And despite having a lot of text dumps that were read by less than 1% of bias, that's the whole premise. They could have made a generic cutscene about mercenaries living in a cruel post-apocalyptic world and that they have to work with everyone and do everything to survive. And that's already a sufficient premise to shoot each other on virtual maps. But instead, they attempted to create an ongoing series with story comics that would be unlocked each week for those who are interested in character stories. Or at least that was the plan. Gameplay consists of a clear and kinda shameless rip-offs of all the multiplayer gaming modes that exist in shooting genres. 
First of all, kill confirmed, capture the point and several others that you directly know from other games. There were attempts to make arena shooters by other AAA companies, however, they didn't overhype their projects, they've made them free to play and they've added at least new maps and character designs from previously known titles. So everyone in their sane mind would ask a reasonable question. Why paying $40 for this if the free-to-play options include the same or even more unique game modes, they look better and they don't try to they them their way into mainstream media? However, in this regard, I'd like to ask a counter question myself. Why did Helldivers succeed despite only offering PvE modes, where you mostly shoot bugs and robots? It's also a paid live service game, and the player count still keeps going quite strong despite the PSN requirement controversy and overall Sony's block of an array of countries out of service for unclear reason. Helldivers had an appealing and unique aesthetic inspired by Starship Troopers, had a huge emphasis on cooperation, had great gunplay, along with unique approach to launch power-ups and none of the they-them BS. Just a straight multiplayer fun with random people who are forced together on the same task to win. What was Concord trying to provide? What kind of entertainment? And I'm sorry for sounding like a broken record, but other than horrific graphic design approach to levels and characters with pronouns, there is nothing unique. And I truly believe that people choosing their own pronouns do not want to pay for them in video games. Concord has launched to an incredibly low population of gamers, and I'm kinda suspicious about such low quantities of players, because there are always early adopters of every new project, there are always Sony fanboys who'll defend each and every game, especially if it's an exclusive, and a lot of people hopeful that the game eventually will change and become better. If we check the numbers of the previously reviewed games that are now considered commercial flops, they didn't launch to such atrocious numbers. Such player population can only be expected from scam-level crypto BS MMO that mines your hardware and sells the crypto somewhere in Cyprus. And it's not like Sony couldn't afford to promote it better, because they've invested into making an episode on Secret Level Show for Concord, which will remain despite the game's current non-existence. All this situation needs a lot of clarifications from Sony's side, not only to improve their further projects and live service genre, but also justify the huge losses in front of investors, while explaining the fiscal regulators where did so much money go, because as a person with a little bit of financial education, I become suspicious when I see hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on a project to close almost in a month after a launch. Seems like a money laundering scheme, right? Or it's the direct result of complete mismanagement through the course of six years, and I cannot figure out what's worse. It was either a deliberate money laundering fraudulent scheme that someone will be held responsible for, or it was a result of overly toxic positivity and lack of healthy criticism and quality assurance. The games of such scope and budget always come with a quality assurance team, they are always checked on how they work, how they're going to be promoted and how they're going to be sold. In modern days, it's unfortunately more important for companies to sell better and promote better while improving the functionality of the game through the course of the sales. And how come nobody asked the Concord team, guys, how are you going to sell it? What is the selling point? How are we going to make money of it? Because once again, other than playing pronouns in generic levels in multiplayer modes, I cannot see any other selling point. They could have made their own free-to-play battle royale with the characters similar to Apex. It would definitely be less of a disaster, while providing the Sony owners their desired feeling of superiority of having an exclusive battle royale. They could have made so much more, but instead they've made the game with the name that I don't even understand the relation and meaning. Maybe I need to be them to understand.